two brand new dream homes, one jaw-dropping tour. Let's go inside in Trenchman Hill. What's up, everyone? It's Karen Richardson, your Atlanta Realtor with the XP Realty and the Atlanta Relocation Guide. Today, we are in Kennesaw, Georgia, taking a look at not one, but two final opportunities in Entrenchment Hill, a community built by Carly Family Homes in West Cobb in Kennesaw. And uh, basically, we're going to look at these two houses. They're roughly 3,500 square feet or five bedrooms, four and a half baths, beautiful property. Let's go take a look. Property tour starting right now. All right, so as we take a look, you see a mix of brick, stone, and party board shaker tile. Got a mostly level driveway. The nice thing about this community, well, this specific house is that you're near the cul-de-sac. So when you see the small little enclave of homes, so there's not gonna be a lot of traffic coming in. And certainly when you're near to the cul-de-sac, there's even less. So the only people coming through here are the people who live here or are visiting. So if you have kids, cul-de-sac's a nice little place to play. Now these homes are gonna be three car garages. Take a look at this first one. You see the driveway has a little bit of a slope, not too, too much. And then it evens out perfectly. And you've got the three car garage. So the two car with the tandem. I wanna quickly show you behind the house. There's a nice little pond. It's not sedentary water, it's active. So there's a uh, stream that feeds into that and there are fish and turtles and whatnot. It's a very active little pond. Back in the day, that was a retention pond and the previous builder a long time ago uh, that started the neighborhood ended up going bankrupt and nature took over. So it creates a nice little uh, spot behind the house there. Doesn't look like you're typically overgrown retention pond. It's a nice little active pond. All right, let's head inside or at least towards the front porch. This has a covered front porch. It wraps around the front, as you'll see. Nice wood door. I love these doors. Here's the front porch. Lots of room for a whole bunch of rocking chairs. There's some decent distance between the homes in here. Some neighborhoods, you could literally reach out and touch your neighbor. Here, there's a little bit more separation. Why don't we take you inside? All right, here we go. Entrance foyer, and they've got the engineered wood throughout the entire main level. Got that ever popular gray color scheme with the white trim. Got a formal living room off of the foyer. And there's an unfinished basement in this house, which we'll check out here in a little bit. We've got a little mudroom coming from the garage. Some built-ins, coats, shoes, whatnot. And you've got your first powder room. Take a quick look at the garage. All ceilings, if you want to put additional storage up there. Access to the tandem, to the third car garage is over here. That's where they talk about the water heater. So yeah, when you've got a ceiling this tall, 
be perfect at you know, one of those uh, sealing systems. And they're deep enough, once you drive a really big truck, uh, to be able to put some kind of a workbench or more storage up against that back wall. But if you drive the really big truck, maybe you're parking out of the third car, so you can still use that space over there. A little coat closet over here. And look at how open this is. So what's unique about this specific model is that it has the keeping room with the fireplace. The kitchen there. The keeping room with the fireplace there. You've got your family room. The fireplace over here. Now this is really neat. You've got the built-in bookshelf, stacks of the fireplace. Pre-wired for a TV up there. Take a look at the kitchen in depth in a moment. Let's take a look at the keeping room. Now the keeping room has a lot of light. Look at all the windows. This is a neat space. Lots of light. And this is where you access the covered back deck. You get a better vantage point of that pond. Let's take a look. I own this home, I would screen this in, put a little door there. Be able to enjoy it without bugs in the summer. All right, that's the pond. I don't know if you can hear it, but you hear water trickling in there. And uh, kids will play around that in the warmer months, fishing, turtles as we mentioned earlier. That's right behind the property. Over there is the next house that we're gonna look at in the second part of this video. All right, hardy board siding. Let's step back inside and take a look at the kitchen. If you enjoy these property tours, consider leaving a thumbs up, subscribing, and hit that bell notification button so you never miss another one. We got a really good sized island and uh, like the pendant lights on top of it. With the gray color scheme, the white cabinets stand out, it's nice and clean. Like the Chevron style backsplash. These are quartz countertops. Like the offset color on the island, the darker gray. Of course, you have the larger sink here, stainless. Under cabinet lighting is a nice touch. And this one also has a pot filler. That's handier than people realize sometimes. I always make a mess when I'm filling up a pot and bringing it from the sink to the cooktop, but I'm clumsy, so. Probably not what everybody does. Then Ted, now it's a Whirlpool appliance package. You can see the five burgers there. Now this house does not come with refrigerator. Very few builders will include the refrigerator. I leave the buyer choose the refrigerator of choice post closing. Got your double ovens, built in microwave, the left there. And you have a walk-in pantry right over here. Standard wire shelves. You can rip that out, rebuild it as wood, custom storage. But it's extremely usable the way that it is. Now this house has a really nice trim package. You see the crown molding everywhere. The baseboards are a little bit thicker. They look like eight inch, probably eight inch baseboards in the house. Got the town molding. There's no cost section for a full coffer. Still really nice. Vaulted ceiling, keeping room. Really nice details. 
There's a nice little lip on the island. Perfect for putting those uh, extra chairs. You're probably not doing bar stool height or bar stool tabletop height. I think standard uh, stool or chair would work. And here's your dining room with the copper ceiling. And given how close this is to the kitchen, this might be where you end up eating most of your meals. I mean, it's it become so modern thing to do is just to eat in the breakfast area, right? So you put a table right here, that's where you're eating. With the dining room that close, not having to go very far with the food, why not make use of that? All right, upstairs or downstairs? I think I'm gonna show you downstairs real fast, and then we're gonna go upstairs next. So it's a full unfinished basement. There's not a whole lot to show, except what the potential is, so it's gonna be fast, okay? In Georgia, I had some comments, people wondering why builders don't finish the basements. It's very uncommon for a builder to finish the basement. What they do is they frame it out the way that you see here. It's stubbed in the corner over there so that you could build your own kitchen, bathroom, whatever those needs might be. And you can see the space underneath the keeping room. It's just how it's done here. Very few builders, as I mentioned, will go through the trouble of finishing out. They just don't do it. More custom builders will sometimes finish the, uh, the basements out. But you can see it's a very large basement, covers the entire footprint of the house. There's a lot that you can do down here if you notice how tall the ceilings are, you definitely would not feel claustrophobic down here. Like some basements that have seven foot ceilings and you need to get full nine feet finished and still have room. All right, that's it for the basement. Let's go upstairs and take a look at the bedrooms and the primary suite. So we have this engineered wood on the stairs as well. Once you get upstairs, it's carpet. All right, let's take a look at the secondary bedrooms. Now, most of the bedrooms are gonna have their own private bathroom. And uh, two of them will share Jack and Jill. This one is a private. So you've got a little vanity there. Tub shower combination, it's tiled. Good size walk-in closet, especially for a secondary bedroom. Nice big windows. There's Colleen putting up the open house sign. We've got two units left in here, as I mentioned. She is the builder's rep, she's a wonderful agent. Here is the second secondary bedroom. Its own private bathroom as well. Quartz countertop, tile floors, tile surround around the tub. and its own walk-in closet. Decent size. All right, moving on. So we've got laundry to the left. They put in some cabinets for extra storage, which is a nice touch. Tile floor. Take a look at the remaining two auxiliaries before we take a look at the primary. Oh, let's go here first. Okay, so I mentioned that there are two bedrooms that share a Jack and Jill bathroom. Uh, these are the smaller closet in this one. And here's the Jack and Jill. Still have two vanities. Two sinks, rather. Sharing one oversized vanity. And here's the tub. Because you're sharing potentially with a sibling or somebody You've got the ability to turn, uh, close the door there while one person is using the sink. Slightly bigger walk-in closet on this side. All right. And they're decent sized rooms. I mean, none of these bedrooms I would say are small by any means. They've done a good job laying out the uh, bedroom house. 
Got a linen closet to my right. Right there. Let's take a look at the primary suite. Got the French doors coming in. All right. That's the good size. They have it set up for you to put the bed of your choice there. King, queen, a California king would fit there. Pictures on the wall for a TV, if that's your thing in the bedroom. And then you've got French doors into the primary bathroom and everything's tiled in here, looks really good. So it is a bit of a step up into the tub, no question, but it's a good sized tub. Look at the frameless shower. Got a little bench in there, everything is tiled. And then you've got two different closets. So two different set of vanities. Got that section there. Water closet to the left. With a little bit of a bigger uh, vanity there. But you've got room to set up a little bench there for a makeup station or, I don't know, a hamper. However you might use that. And then here is closet number one. Closet number two. So because these are the last two remaining homes in Trench and Hill, the builder has adjusted the price and they're giving some incentives that you can apply towards a further reduction of the price, closing costs, buying your interest rate, and so forth. So I've got some more information about that. If you're interested in this house and you'd like more information about those incentives, definitely give me a call or a text at 678-785-5275. All right, that's it for this house. Now we're gonna go and take a look at the other one, just down the street. Let's go to the next property, a little bit of a walk, but I wanna show you what kind of a drive you have to get out there, because it's a, it's a longer, kind of like a private drive. You don't have a bunch of houses off of it. So I'm gonna show that to you here in just a moment. But if you're interested in this upcoming house, Show you take a look cul-de-sac so you don't have again a lot of through traffic that's the nice thing about this neighborhood it's not the biggest neighborhood so you don't have tons of cars coming and going all the time and down here you only have two homes so it's going to feel like your own very private drive so if you end up buying a house like that uh, back it's got a permanent easement you never have to worry about whoever owns this house saying you can't use this space so that's good Got a little active creek down here. Actually, there's a little bridge you can see. That's coming from the uh, little pond over there. And here's the second home. So this one over here has been sold. And here's 767. Also has that wrapped around porch, another three car garage. We'll see they built a massive retaining wall. And then in the back there is an older neighborhood. Big driveway. Let's show you the back real quick. All right, so. This angle of the backyard, a little bit of a slope. See where they've got all the rocks there to help direct the flow of water. The house that we saw earlier was up there. And here you've got another three car garage, two car with the tandem set up. Like in the other one. All right. All right. 
good size house. They're both 3,474 square feet. This one's got another five bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms. And as we step in, I've got to put you on hold for a second to turn on all the lights. But again, thanks to the magic of editing, you're not going to see that. Hey, real quick, if you haven't already done so, consider leaving a thumbs up, subscribing, and hitting that bell notification button. That way you'll never miss another tour. You'll know when I release the next one, which is at least once every week. Thank you for your support. Back to the video. And we're back. All right. So I wanted to show you the wraparound front porch, what kind of view you get here. actually a nicer view honestly because you've got a little bit more nature that you're looking at and in the warmer months the summer months you'll you won't see a lot of these neighbors because of the trees so it's a little bit more private back here which is nice all right let's step inside this has a darker stain theme floors are going to be darker in this home Still engineered wood, all in the main level. So it's the same floor plan, but flipped. So a formal living here. Or a great spot for an office. On this side here, you've got the mudroom. Got the powder room. We've got the access to the garage over here. This one comes with your own compost starter kit. Third car for the tandems on this side. Water heater, same setup, right? But it's flipped. Same great height for extra storage, depth for workbench or something in the back. Okay, so this one has slightly different finishes. The other house is a little bit more expensive. Quality of finishes a little bit more. One thing you're gonna notice is here, we don't have the keeping room. So there's no bump out there. Now in the MLS, they had both listed at 3474 square feet. I would imagine that one of these homes has less square footage because of that. I'm gonna find out what it is and put a correction in the video. Here's the kitchen. The Whirlpool appliance package. We got that same Chevron backsplash with this tile. Might be the same tile. Different countertops though. But they are quartz, different style. You don't have the offset color for the island, so it's a little bit more uniform. Different kind of pendant lights. Still have the five burner. And in this house, they're throwing in the refrigerator. You don't have that in the other house. But with the concessions they're giving in terms of rebates, you could potentially ask them to put one in here. Honestly, I would take it off the uh, interest rates or put it towards closing costs, I think that would pay higher dividends. Sink's different in this one. We've got the ceramic instead of the stainless. Stainless is nice, but man, does it ever show stains, water stains, right? This doesn't. So, but it's white. So it shows dirt in a different kind of way. Got the under cabinet lighting, same trim package. Here is the family room. Got the beams, partial copper. Bookshelves are ready for all of your little knickknacks, family uh, pictures, heirlooms, etc. Nice windows there. Lots of can lights. So I think one of the big differences between the two properties is this one has a little bit more tree cover. So you have a little bit less natural light coming in, but you still have some 
good windows and they're compensated with a couple more lights to help keep it brighter step outside here. So I was mentioning that it's nice and private. So there's the older neighborhood. This is what's immediately behind. We've so got the covered porch, back deck. The pond is up over that way. And here, most likely here's some of the neighborhood kids playing there. A very popular school district, Harrison High, all the way down to the elementary. And this is a space that could easily be enclosed and screened in as well. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the house. Okay, yeah, dining room well, real quick before we leave this area. Different light fixture in here as well. So this does have the coffee ceiling. Yeah, if, uh, if I lived here, I would eat in here more often than the breakfast area. Like all the windows around the dining room. You got your pantry, good size. Okay, let's go downstairs first. I wanna show you the potential of the face paint. It is also unfinished. We're gonna make this real quick. And I love the fact that they've got the higher ceilings. We've got access to the outside right over here. A little bit more of a poured pad here. The other house doesn't have that. That's kind of neat. We've got the retaining wall right there. Right back inside. This one's also stubbed in the corner over there. The bathroom, kitchen, potential stubs here. Probably kitchen on the other side, bathroom here. The daylight basement. Back here would be the perfect spot for storage, and potential storm shelter. Not that you need them terribly often, but like that corner there. That's probably the most uh, reinforced and safest part spot of the house if something were ever to happen. All right, let's go upstairs. Now everything has a darker color scheme in this house. You'll see what I mean when you see the carpet. The uh, staircase, the stains darker as well. Front door looks darker. I really like the darker stain, but it shows dirt a lot easier than lighter stains. We found that out the hard way at our house. All right, let's take a look at the secondary bedrooms. Now everything is carpet up here, as I mentioned. The darker carpet. And it's the same floor plan reversed. So I'm not gonna spend as much time in this house, but we'll have that great walk closet, private bathroom, still tile everything. Or they're a little bit nicer than this one actually. Another secondary bedroom here. Bathroom. Got the walk in closet. All right, we are working towards the primary school. One gear right here. Actually, storage cabinets there. Nice towel floor. We're going to finish with the primary suite. I'm quickly going to show you the two bedrooms that are linked. Jack and Jill, got your living closet there, the upstairs. Got the closet here. And Jack and 
Mozilla over here. We've got the large vanity, two different sinks, lots of uh, cabinets. Same thing. Tub. Hard on the stone door. Here is the final secondary bedroom. Smaller closet in this one. Okay, let's go take a look at the primary space. It's just a little bit darker. Just how the light hits the space. I think adding some can lights uh, to the section over here would be good. Turn those on if you want extra light. The darker carpet so there's less light bouncing off of it as well. Different kind of tile in this bathroom. It's got the same setup. So Good size vanity on the right. Lots of space there on the countertop. Got the nice frameless shower there, the tub. I like the size. And here is the other station. Same little spot for a little bench or a hamper, whatnot. And you got the two walk in closets. And then one there. Those are the two properties that Curly Family Homes has left over in Entrenchment Hill. If you'd like more information about these properties, feel free to contact me. All my contact information is in the description below. And whether you're moving to Atlanta in 60 days or six months, I can help make your move as smooth as possible. But I can't help you unless you contact me. So feel free to do that. As I mentioned, all my contact information is down below and I'd love to help you find a great house. All right, if you're interested in watching the next video, click over here. You never want to miss another one. If you haven't already done so, I'd consider subscribing. Click over here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.